There are different types of responsibility. We talk, for example, about moral responsibility, legal responsibility, social responsibility or causal responsibility. So responsibility takes many different forms. If we start with causal responsibility, it is something that causes something else. So, for example, if I'm walking in the forest with my little puppy and my puppy digs up a plant, then my puppy is causally responsible for digging up the plant. But it might be that even though my puppy is causally responsible, I might be morally or legally responsible for it. Say that the plant is some kind of um, rare plant um, that's only found in that forest and my puppy ducks it up. So then I might be morally responsible for failing to take care uh, of my puppy well enough to look after what the puppy is doing. And also it might be um, that I have a good reason that there's no blameworthiness for me about what my puppy did causally, that I had some good excuse um, to not pay attention at that moment. But it might be that I'm still legally responsible for the damage uh, my puppy has caused. So um, the legal, moral and the causal um, sense of responsibility, they're closely linked, but they don't necessarily go one to one. And of course, we can also have causal responsibility for things that are not agent related. So, for example, a very high gust of wind can blow down a tree and that's causally done it. So what's really important is when we're looking at um, in court cases is like who has um, the causal responsibility is very important there, the causal relations. But it's not just who has caused this thing, it's also sometimes we have to go down in the chain. So, for example, if there's a forest fire that has burned down all the trees, but what has caused the forest fire? And in this sense, we're going down to look at who's actually responsible for it and it could be again like morally blameworthy or praiseworthy or it could be totally neutral or it could just have legal consequences and then we also have social responsibility and this is the kind of responsibility we have as part of different roles we have for example as parents or as siblings or more like wider social responsibility or responsibility for the kind of um, wider society we're with or even for future generations so there are many um, phases for responsibility some of our responsibility is forward-looking, so it's prospective responsibility. It's about responsibility about things that are yet to happen. So it can be about like obligations and duties that what we have to do in the future to take into account this thing or that thing. Or it can also be different kinds of opportunities and this can be moral or this can be legal responsibility. When we're looking backwards, we're talking about retrospective responsibility. And then we're usually, in moral cases, assessing um, praiseworthiness or blameworthiness. So are we responsible for this and is it something that you um, should have done differently or is it something that you did well? Uh, we're like assessing the moral value of what happened. And sometimes also um, backwards responsibility can be morally neutral, for example with polluter pays principle. Um, if you have a factory that's polluting the nearby river, it doesn't mean that the factory is necessarily blameworthy for it in a sense that it might be that they had um, all the different um, um, safety measures in place but still something happened and the river is being polluted. So in these kind of cases it can be that it's just a kind of more like neutral morally responsibility but it still has legal responsibility and maybe they have to clean up the river for example. The responsible agent doesn't have to be an individual, it can also be a collective agent. So I'm talking about agents such as states or corporations or different associations or universities. So collective agents can also have responsibility for many things. They can have legal responsibility. So for example, the factory can legally be responsible for polluting the river. But you can also talk about moral responsibility that's a certain uh, association or a certain corporation should have done better, even though they're within the legal parameters. So, and these different parameters are set by different um, collective actors. So for example, then the corporation has to operate within the parameters set by the state. What I think is very in interesting um, when you were thinking about this kind of collective responsibility is looking at the individuals within these different collective agents. So what kind of responsibility do we have as part of our different roles, either social roles or these kind of different work-related roles? And what kind of ways do the individuals um, can affect the collective outcome and in which ways the individual and collective responsibility are linked? So let's look at climate change as a case study. We can look at the different types of responsibility I've been talking about. 
So we can have like collective responsibility for the state, for example, to come up with regulation that is very climate friendly or ambitious regulation that will actually reduce emissions. Then we have different kinds of um, collective actors who have responsibility to act within uh, the parameters set by the law, but also outside them. Because there's a lot of things that we can regulate for, but we cannot regulate everything going on in society. So we can think that, for example, there's some products that a corporation is manufacturing, and maybe they're perfectly legal, but maybe the corporations should still think, is there another way we can manufacture this product? Or is there some more like uh, environmentally friendly or more carbon neutral way we can do it? Or should we manufacture something else entirely? So we can still think, that maybe corporations, for example, also have responsibility towards future generations, for example, in the kind of products they make and how sustainable they are. Then we can also think of different actors um, like individuals or what should they do? Should they vote? What kind of candidates um, in, in uh, elections? and what kind of climate policy will these candidates be driving? Or what are they doing as consumers? What kind of products are they um, supporting with their purchasing decisions? But I don't think just looking at it with this very strict um, division between individual and collective actors is a very fruitful way of looking at it. I rather look at it in the way those two interlinked. So in which ways are the individuals um, able to maybe influence the collective actors in the different kind of decisions they make, for example, about sustainability. So we should not just look at ourselves as individual um, consumers or voters, but we should also think of ourselves as members of all these different kinds of collective agents and think of our different social roles and think of our different roles within these agents and think Maybe there is some sort of um, sweet spot for us to influence things and maybe that's the best way of dealing with our own responsibility towards making the climate change situation better and reducing emissions.